what is the difference between the British SBS and the American Navy SEALs? And, and who's best? <laughs> well, you know what? I always say about the British military being the best in the world because we haven't got any money. So we're, we're, um, we're jack of all trades, masters of none. Um, but one thing I'll say, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, when it comes to um, the SBS and the SEALs, I just think we have a bigger, um, a bigger toolbox. You know, we're, we're good at a, a number of different skills. Fortunately, the Americans do have a lot more money or budget um, for the military so that when it comes to, you know, they'll get one person to hold the rifle and the other person to pull the trigger. <laughs> mm. But, um, you know, I, I just, sorry, but um, I, whether you call me bi or still what, I just think the SBS are, are, are absolutely amazing and um, I'll put them at the top of the pedestal any day. Well, I was talking to somebody the other day, SBS, and they said um, they hadn't done the dive course, which I was really surprised about. Um, they'd gone straight out to the Middle East, basically, and hadn't fit, they'd started the dive, but hadn't finished it. I was really... Um, yeah, I just I think a lot of that that's that's just because of circumstances, isn't it? I think there's quite a lot of people that they join the SBS and because of the demand out in Afghan and and various other um, theatres, I, I just don't think they had time to do that. So <clears throat> although they join the SBS, uh, and you know it is quite a specialist skill, the SBS. It's not to say we don't, you know, we obviously can do everything we do on land anyway, but a specialist skill. Is uh, is waterborne operations and insertion, um, but you know, in a theatre that's not demanding that, then what are you going to do? Stick people on a dive course or get them out into into yeah. the war zone as quickly as possible to be to support the other lads. So, I think that was just circumstantial, and I, I, I certainly know there's a few people saying, "Yeah, no, I think I think you're you're exactly right." And just the two two. Last question, Zolly. Uh, from just from a physical perspective, for those of us that have found our physical prime at fifty years old, <laughs> um, what what's kind of the hardest uh, like running type or marching type event you do, and what's the kind of hardest swimming or diving on um, selection? Yeah, the hardest the hardest part, and I don't know if they do it so much before because. Um, not many people know this, but I was one of, I think I'm one of three people in the world that has done the old SBS selection and the new SAS selection. So I, you know, I did my first selection, got to the end, and there was a bit of an altercation with the Welsh farmer on the combat and survival, uh, which meant that I got RTU'd at the last moment. Uh, and when I went back, that was, that was the old special boat, the SBS selection which was um, we used to join with Hereford for the, the trees and also combat survival at the end, but the rest was sort of done uh, individually. Um, so then the I went trees, back is after. That, is that the jungle, the trees? Yeah, the jungle, sorry, yeah. Um, and then when I went back, it was, it was the first, oh, I did the second course, I missed the first one. I did the second course of the new selection, which is the joint selection. Um, but on the first selection, you, we used to do a thing called a portage, which was nine miles with a clepper canoe. Mm. And that, I mean, I th we've actually got it coming up in um, SAS Who There's Winds in the next, I don't think it's, I don't know if it's tonight, it's on Monday or whether it's next week, but it's coming up anyway. But basically that is where you split the, you know, the bones of the canoe. It's a two man military canoe, a clepper. Um, that you take all the bones out, which is the wood parts. Uh, someone carries that and someone else carries the skin. And you have to carry that for nine miles. I think that's, that's probably the hardest march I've ever done because the weight was just insane, insane amount of weight on your shoulders. Um, and then what was it, the swimming? Was the other question swimming, about swimming? Yeah. Um, to be honest, you didn't, I mean, you had to be a good swimmer but really, you know, it's, it's, it's showing a level of uh, swimming ability when you're on selection. 
I mean, the hardest swims we did were surface swims when we actually joined the SBS. You know, I mean, you would do a few K surface swim. And also, you know, some of the ops dives you did, you know, some of the, you know, you only use, use diving in the SBS as a means of transport, as a means, means of transit. Mm. You know, you're three meters below the surface thereabouts on a rebreather um, at night, usually just following the compass board to target. Um, and some of those were absolutely hideous but the surface you know subsurface was actually easier than doing surface swims you know you do 5k surface swim it's just hideous hideous this, this is is this where you've come up to the surface in in your dive gear and you're finning say ashore yeah yeah that's that's correct and you can have or you, you know you, you you could be swimming out to a target or for extraction you could be swimming into target um and you could more than likely have an ops bag as well so you'd have like a an ortley bag with all your ops kit in there and um you know sometimes you know you're swimming you know, you're just stationary because you're swimming against the tide you just got to swim against the tide until the tide changes or 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 becomes high tide or low tide before you can carry on so it's it's, it's just horrendous hideous i found that hideous more than going subsurface wow